Um, so for those of you that are joining us for the first time, um, a food safety Friday fundamentals is really to try and give, um, I suppose, newbies to food safety and to the food safety industry the opportunity to get to understand some of the basics. So we've had a series over the last few um, weeks where we've been chatting about what it means to get your certificate of acceptability. We chatted to some EHPs from Okuraleni to try and help understand exactly why we would need to, um, you know, or what we would need to do around the COA. And then we started chatting about what it means to get into the uh, retail sector. So last time, two weeks ago, we chatted about the progression um, that you can follow as a, a company trying to enter the food industry or the food sector, a uh, food retail sector rather. Um, and, you know, that's really why today's presentation is so important because we're going to kind of be picking up on that. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. So we're all on audio. If you are on your phone, it actually works quite well. I'm quite impressed. Um, but what's important for you to understand is that um, you need to be able to ask questions. So um, you'll see that there is a, a little question bar. If you're on your phone, it's on the bottom of your screen. If you're on the system, it's on the little go to um, go to meeting or go to webinar um, a control bar. So please pop your questions in because we have a um, very important speaker today and uh, she would ve be very glad to uh, take your questions at the end of the session. So last time we chatted about the food safety initiative within South Africa and we also spoke about the global market capacity building program um, and I kind of gave an overview of where did it come from, um, you know, looking at it from the GFSI perspective but we really thought that to do it justice, um, it's it, we should bring in the, uh, I suppose, the owners, the coordinators of the program in South Africa, that being the Consumer Good, Goods Council. And so, Mitlau, thank you so much for making yourself available. I know that you're like literally running between meetings today. So thank you so much for squashing us in and for giving us this opportunity. And um, as soon as you are the executive of the Food Safety initi initi Initiative <laughs> of the Consumer Goods Council of South Africa, what better opportunity or which, which better person to actually take us through exactly what this is and, and how it can benefit companies that want to enter the retail sector. So I'm now going to ask McLeod to take us through a short presentation and then we'll have a conversation after that. Thanks, McLeod. Over to you. Thank you so much. Um, if I could say I started right at the bottom doing your quality control, your quality assurance in various factories around South Africa. And I then got to become an inspector of the Department of Agriculture. Uh, it was Department of Agriculture then where we were doing various inspections, um, especially in the in the free state region. And from there on, I moved to a division that was drafting regulations in, in Pretoria, which is the food safety and quality assurance. So that has been my journey throughout and until I got to be the executive of the food safety initiative. Um, and uh, it's been quite a long and an awesome journey, I must say, because I've done a right, right round about uh, in terms of, of my, my, my career moves. So um, today we hopefully going to be making a little bit of sense in terms of how do people get to the certification which everyone wishes to get to. Um, so that's, that's who I am. And I think I need to press show my screen. Yes, please, Matla. I would appreciate that. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, so um, I've, I've got just critical three slides and I'm glad, Linda, that you've already dealt with how to get a certificate of acceptability and what is the, the global food safety initiative from the global level. And because basically what we will be talking about today stems from all of those um, uh, uh, pillars that we, 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 we abide by. And just as, as general history, the global food safety initiative the global um, alliance that we align with in terms of how we operate. Hence, they say that if a standard is um, benchmarked with the Global Food Safety Initiative, it is recognized everywhere. So either you choose BRC, FSSC, whichever one that you choose, if it is recognized with, with GFSI, you, you, you can choose whichever one that you, you are totally aligned with and it should be acceptable to the market. And so with that, 
um, in terms of the global markets capacity building, they thought it best that they need to have something for companies that are that are that might be getting challenges or just want to take a step approach in terms of getting to certification, which is a brilliant thing that we must commend for the GFSI to put together such a thing. So years back, uh, even before my time, the food safety initiative of the CGCSA uh, took it upon themselves to embark on this journey as well for companies that are in South Africa to say, let's bring this home in terms of um, the global market capacity building and adopt it and align with what the GFSI is doing. So all the checklists, all the guidelines from what the GFSI, they're freely available. They, we've now taken them and we have them on our website just to bring it home. And what the technical experts did at that time, they sat together around the, 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 the table and they made sure that whatever requirements that are there from a global perspective, they are aligned with what if there's a requirement that pertains to local regulations, they would then make sure that it, it gets inserted in terms of once you comply to the, once you use the checklist that are available, you can readily comply to the local hygiene regulations. We are going to be embarking on that particular process again to make sure that it's updated in terms of the new um, hygiene regulations. So if I can just share, I just like this, this snapshot that we did with the team in, in, in the case of it also helped them to understand um, the levels when we say you moving from a, 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 a lower level up until certification, how do you go about it? And in most cases, this snapshot just gives you a picture of when we say regulations are minimum standards and certification has got additional things, but the approach is that you need to build up from where you start because this is a legal requirement in terms of the hygiene regulations, getting a certificate of acceptability. They've already explained that from um, the food focus, what, what does your transport need to, to be and what are the requirements there for food premises. And I can promise you, if you touch on getting a certificate of acceptability get assessed by the environmental health practitioners you are well on your way to get to certification because everything is is, is aligned with each other either you're doing the hygiene you're working towards achieving a certificate of acceptability you are working towards um, the requirements that are in the GFSI global markets. So as you can see here just as a snapshot if we could look at let's say um which one would be um exactly the case if we were to compare i would say let's take a simple one staff facilities already facilities for for on 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 food premises uh protective clothing um let's see transport of food uh, person in charge, food handlers, those requirements, you've already touched on them from an, an R638 perspective. So by the time you get to basic level of the GFSI global markets, you have already done some work, you've already documented, you've already ensured that your facility has got answers to a number of things from a, 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 a hygiene regulations perspective. So then you then move to the checklist from the global markets perspective. You, you do the exercise in terms of checking, do I have traceability in place? Have I written it down in terms of a policy? What is my plan of action? Do I have corrective action? You build up. This is a process of building up towards certification. And once you have ticked all the boxes and you are sure that you have achieved that, you can then move to intermediate, which is additional requirements that you need to work on in terms of ensuring that you are well on your way to certification. As you can see, now we are dealing with bigger things now. We we, we, we're dealing with issues pertaining to your HACCP, we're dealing with issues pertaining to your food defense, your vulnerabilities, and so forth. And once you have achieved that, the assurance that we get is that you are well on your way to achieve bigger things in terms of certification now. You can be on BRC, FSSC 22000, or whichever. I just use the, the example of FSSC 22000 in terms of just showcasing the requirements that they fit into each other in terms of you moving from the regulation to global markets and 
up until you get to certification is the stepwise process and it is the assurance that we 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 have that you will get to certification with that um this is just a standard presentation that i use i just want to check and this is just a snapshot we all want to get to this point in terms of certification and in most cases i always stress that let's not look at retail but let's look at the market if you have to take your products to the uae you have to take them to africa trade is now open they're going to be working on their tariffs so if any country requires that you be on any certification um level you would be able to to get there and it is specifically market related including the retail side of things so as we can see there the bylaws come into effect getting your certificate of acceptability and your legislation that is where we start and i want to emphasize the bylaws in terms of in most cases you find that you have a place where you 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 plan to have a facility only to find that that is not a dedicated place or a zoned place for for food manufacturing so you need to start with those and work together with the environmental health practitioners to ensure that where you are setting up is going to be the the, the zoned and um, the correct place for you to to do the facility otherwise the, the, the that's going to impact you in terms of moving right ahead in terms of you doing the the certification so this is just a nice representation to say it is possible uh, in almost three years you can you can get to certification some have done it even uh, sooner if you've got the the, 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 the the correct team in place and um, I think I won't go into this one um, um, uh, Linda but I just love this pictures and we in, in most cases people say, why should i comply i'm just small but the, the essence of it all is that this is for the consumer's protection and we must all just comply to that so let me end it there and um uh, take it forward with you over to you linda thanks Matlau. so now if i you know the, it, it looks very um what's the right word it looks it, it, it looks very intimidating because you know i'm going from this kind of business all the way through to playing with the big boys now. I mean, if you look at that slide, there are lots and lots of requirements on that on that slide. What is the success rate for small organizations? So I'm talking now, you know, um, not a street vendor because I don't think there's, it's quite appropriate, but, but a small company who would want to be, um, you know, supplying maybe four or five retail stores. What is the success rate in actually getting through this process? Hmm. I, I wouldn't say we, we do have a record in terms of how many have gone through the process because it, it was initially not structured in that way. But we yeah. plan to, to have a structured manner where we are going to know who is coming in through from point A up until point B so that we can track and see is it working in, yeah. in the South African perspective or is it not working but if we sit with the with with the smes that are currently fsi members and we showcase that you need to start here it, that brings up the, the light bulb moment for them to say this yes. is the way no matter how daunting it is this is the work that i need to do to have in place because it starts with the regulations if you don't have sure. a, a, a a policy on protective clothing or the person in charge is not trained and you don't know what the procedures your food handlers um follow and it's not on paper and you you wouldn't be able to embark on the basic level so the lessons are in preparing for the hygiene regulations in order for get used to putting all of those um, mechanisms in place. Absolutely. And I think the, you know, the change in the regulations where there's a bit more focus on having to be able to prove that you're doing certain things with documentation, you know, and those kinds of things. I think that is now becoming a, it, it is actually a better foundation than it used to be previously where, when it was purely just an inspection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the FSI. I mean, you know, you've mentioned members. So, so what is the FSI? What is the objective of the organization? Mm. So the Food Safety Initiative is a division of the Consumer Goods Council of South Africa, which is an industry open, um, I mean, an industry association, which is open to any role player that is playing a 
a, either a service provider, we've got laboratories as members, we've got uh, consultants as, um, uh, as, as, as members, we've got your food focus as members in terms mm -hmm. of we are all in this together. Let's work together towards achieve to, 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 towards a common goal, which is ensuring that what we put on the tables of our consumers is um, um is, is is safe and it is healthy. And how we do that is from the engagements that we have with the various members, because I cannot know everything that is happening in the food sector, but there will always be someone that I can rely on if and when we engage in the meetings in a non-competitive manner to say, how do I um, jump this, this hoop? So the CGTSA is member-based. We've got various divisions. The other ones are dealing with crime and risk, but we are dealing with the side of things. So that is who the FSI is. And anyone can really um, sign up as a member. Um, there is a fee uh, because we are in a non, not-for-profit um, organization. Perfect. And then, Matlau, in terms of the, um, you know, being a member of the organisation, I mean, obviously, if I go back to the original structure of the FSI, where it came from, the idea here was to try and, as you said, get all the retailers on the same page. So at least we can have one audit and that one audit meets everyone's requirements. But what is it like in real life? I mean, have we achieved that objective or is it still not quite one audit meets all requirements? Mm. I, I think from, from, from what we gather from the, the various complaints that we get, there's still a little bit of, of frustration in terms of suppliers saying that we are required to to, to 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 comply to a certain it might be that that particular uh, market is 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 well accustomed to that particular um, uh, food safety management system however as we have aligned with the GFSI, the GFSI says once certified, recognized everywhere. So if I yeah. come with my, my BRC or if I come with FSC or if I come with global market, it, it should be acceptable in the sense that we made a commitment that we are aligning with what the GFSI is intent to make sure that we, we, we align globally because if I have a market in Kenya and they, 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 they ask me to comply to a China gap, that is going to, 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 to be a little bit problematic if I already have global, um, uh, I mean, if I already have um, what, is, what we call the other gap that we have or Kenya gap or whichever, because they have all been checked thoroughly by the GFSI and they put a stamp on, on it to say, it totally aligns with all the, the food safety management systems. So that is the message that we always emphasize even when we, we talk to our various members um, in terms of saying that let's stick to what we have committed in alignment with the GFSI to say once certified on a GFSI benchmark standard, it should be recognized. I agree. I think it, it's just it would be really great if it was right, you know, like that, practically speaking, all the time. Now, you yeah. mentioned the GFSI and a lot of people talk about I need a GFSI audit. Um, is there really such a thing as a GFSI audit? I, I think is there is it's, it's possibly someone just someone who has just had someone say go and find a food safety certificate mm. and they will stick on the GFSI when it should be just go and get a food safety management system certification or start with the basic level of global markets capacity building. So that is why I, 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 the, the language that, that people use, especially if you don't know and, and you are just new, you are doing awesome and great things in terms of your products, and that might be the, the little confusion. We get a number of those um, inquiries through to the CGCSA and we just take them through the process that you are actually looking to get to certification. But then we will channel them through to say, if you are small, rather start here on um, getting a certificate of acceptability and we yes. will direct them to the to the global markets in order for them to get the necessary uh, language in, in, in place. And that is that is critically and exactly how one benefits if you are a member of an association. 
because you get to learn the language, you get to to learn what is yes. the, the yeah. ins and out of a sector. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's where, you know, there's often this misunderstanding that the GFSI provides the benchmarking of food safety standards, but it is not, in fact, a standard on its own. Um, you oh, know, you, you need to select a benchmark standard. Um, and as you said, FSSC could be one of those, mm -hmm. uh, one oh. of those standards. Now, um, but Clara, if we look at the, you know, the requirements and the cost of getting an audit and what have you, do you not think that this is still prohibitive and a, a potential barrier to smaller companies accessing markets such as the retail sector? Because going through this process, it's not like a COA where it's free. Now I have to start paying and it can be considerable costs. Hmm. Yeah, I think for that, that is why I, I like this approach in terms of someone hmm. starting with the regulations, getting on basic level, because you can do that in your own time. You you basically on, on basic um, level, some some suppliers have gotten the market and in, in local retail on basic level, especially if the, the product risk is quite minimal and they have gotten through because you can showcase that I have put measures in place, I know what I'm doing, I have written it down. So it's 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 it it is a costly exercise and in as much as we can say getting a certificate of acceptability is 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 is, is it doesn't have a cost in it, but to get a dedicated person to look at all of these things and invest in making sure that the policies are in place, the, 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 the standard operating procedures are in place, that is a cost in, in it. It's unfortunate yeah. that we are providing a service to the consumers and we must assure that it is safe. And we always allude to the cost of compliance generally that is um, quite huge for the sector. That is the unfortunate part. But if someone mm -hmm. embarks on this journey and does it in their own time, in their own pace, at some point you, we will get them. Yes, yeah, and I, and I think that you know the the person who's dedicated um, is a very important point, which a lot of people do not recognise and don't even want to accept initially. But if food safety does unfortunately take a focused approach, like you have a financial manager, you know, someone who's responsible for maintenance. Um, you know, in my experience, most of the time you end up having to employ this person to to be responsible for managing the system, although they are not responsible for food safety on their own you know everyone has to has to play a role Perfect. now Perfect. what does the fsi do to support small suppliers i mean you you know obviously i can become a member i can pay but is there a small supplier uh, almost like program that you have in in place and and what would i need to to do in order to access that program mm -hmm. indeed uh, we, we we took a a a, a decision i think two years ago to to ensure that we we bring in the smaller suppliers in 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 in, in, in our fold because we 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 had major big companies as as our members previously so we firstly put together an smme offering especially from an fsi point of view where we even allowed a debit order transaction for them to pay monthly to get to that 3,000 that we, is it 3,000? I think it, it is 3,000 annual fee that you pay and you get full services. I mean, I get as, um, our small suppliers that, and, I, and we allow that between myself and Precious. Our WhatsApp is on call because we do understand that SMMEs are not necessary. During the day, they're in the field. At night, that is when they focus on other things. So we have to be open to get to resolve their issues at the time that suits them. So that is the SMME offering. They come to the meetings. They, we help them with, with any technical issues that they might have. And also, we have recently put together an SMME program, which uh, the details are on our website of how you you, you participate. We are going to be taking um, uh, SMMEs in, in, in cohorts in terms of grouping them together as when we have a number that we can have on the day. Because we realize that most people come to the PSA, they request assistance and they sail off. We don't have that track. As you were saying, do we know if people are really progressing? 
from getting a COA to basic to intermediate. So we just want to see and grow together with them throughout up until they get to the level where they, they want to be. So we've got those two awards from an SMI, an SME membership, and also the SMME program that we have recently put together. Great. The last question, Matlau, I mean, getting into the retail sector involves a food safety audit, but that's not the end of it because, um, you know, there's the buyer and there's making sure that the product is actually, you know, suitable for market and those kinds of things. Does that also cover, is that also covered by the CQCSA or are you really focusing more on the application of the FSI? We really not because those are, are business decisions. So we leave them to the to the retailers, but we do get in touch with them as and when a member has got a little bit of a challenge in understanding, we will we will play we will always play the facilitation role in terms of, of, of getting but we, we don't engage in business to business um in terms of because the, the requirements will differ. Um, in terms mm. of the the, 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 the the retailer or the market, because I would I think they have um, different LFMs. So the other one might be targeting this higher level, the other one might be on this other level. So all of those ones that we we, we, we work closely with them, but we leave it to to the to the retailers to to manage that with the supply. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's an important point that people do need to understand. You know, there is a business relationship. Relationship, um, and there are business rules. Um, you mentioned that it is possible for a supplier to get into the retail sector even on a basic. Um, so, so I mean, what incentive is there for me to go to the next level if I just need to do the basic? Is that really what the intention is of the capacity building program? Is it not intended to encourage a supplier to go to certification? Correctly so. It, it is the, the, the intent that you are on this step, you need to move to, to certification. So that is where then the relation on a business to business will come in. They, they might say, we see your product, let's say we, you're selling vegetables, you are, you are a farmer, you are on this level, but at some point you need to get to what do I, global gap level because mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. one is, is CFSI benchmarked. So the essence of it is that you are here, we recognize you, you've done the work, there's minimal um, assurance that you are going somewhere. So that is why we, we have that one year um, allocation to say you need to move in, in that space of, of, of years to get to certification. So mm. if you stay there and you don't put the effort in, the market might require you to move further ahead with your, with your, with your, um, um, uh, compliance issues like your defense and, and any additional issues that you might have to, to put in place. Yeah, and it is a reality though that unfortunately there aren't one set of rules when it comes to that. So I think the intention is, you know, but when it comes again to the business rules, that's unfortunately where the playing fields are not all level. Um, and it will depend very much on the retailer that you're supplying, which is unfortunate because I think again, the intention was to try and have one set of rules, um, you know, to try and at least um, take away some of the confusion around food safety because it can be quite confusing. It, it can be, yeah. yeah. Matal, thank you so much for explaining, um, you know, the opportunities that there are for, um, you know, members uh, to look at in terms of the FSI, the support that's available from the FSI. Um, I think that, you know, you're doing great work with the smaller suppliers. I know it's definitely an area that you're passionate about. Um, and so that's, that's really great. Um, a, a, Del, uh, let's open the floor to um, some questions. Any questions from anyone else out there? I've given, had a shot at my questions. What about you guys? Yes, yeah, if anybody can raise their hand, if they've got a specific question, um, I will unmute you and you'll be able to ask your questions. So, um, yeah, let's see. Is there anybody that would like to um, contribute or ask anything pertaining to this topic? We'll give it a, a second or two. Oh, well, it seems like you guys did such a good job that, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that we don't have any, any questions from the floor. 
That's great. Well, McLeod, you did a good job. No questions. It means everyone got the answers that they were looking for. So thank you so much for that. For everybody out there, remember this recording will be available and we would definitely like to encourage you to share it with as many people that you know that are SMMEs that are trying to get ahead in terms of food safety. Um, this is an important message. It's an important opportunity to be able to progress. So why don't you pay this one forward? For those of you that have been there, done that and got the t-shirt, this is a great opportunity for you to find a smaller company that you could mentor and why not share this recording with them so that they can also gain access to um, these channels. For many smaller companies out there, they simply do not know that these organizations such as the Consumer Goods Council even exist. So why don't we help them and make it easier for them to become food safe. But Cloud, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Everyone out there, have a great weekend and be safe on these wet roads. Thank you so much.